Hello there, everyone, and welcome, welcome, one and all, to the Super, Super, Super Kickmania Pro Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, David Pstansky, and in today's show, we're going to be discussing everything that went down at the 2021 WWE Royal Rumble event. And wow, what an unbelievable event it was. It was so good. It was so weird, in a sense, to see a Royal Rumble with no audience. And of course, we're in the Thunderdome, but it was the first Royal Rumble, and hopefully the last Royal Rumble, that will uh, be an event like this in the Thunderdome. And hopefully, going by uh, things back at WrestleMania, we'll just start having fans back in attendance. Whether it will just be WrestleMania that has fans, and then we'll get a mix of Thunderdome shows and a mix of... um, live attendance uh, shows then you know we'll soon find out but hopefully this is the last one that's in front of the Thunderdome it was still great to me uh the Royal Rumble it wouldn't have had the same excitement if it had been like when we had Wrestlemania last year that that felt really flat so having crowd noise even if it's slightly a sweetened crowd noise it was good seeing excitement and everything this was still a very exciting event and wow well, Let's go over the results. Let's go over like the surprises because there were some surprises um, of like there was some expectations of who's going to win certain things or who wasn't going to win certain things. But the first match, the first match on the main show, because before we got to the main show, we did have a pre-show where um, we saw Oscar and Charlotte Flair losing to Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. So. With that, there's new world's women tag team champions. But the first show on the main card, Drew McIntyre and Goldberg. And it's just the same thing over again. It is almost a joke. It's almost a parody. It's like WWE just feel like how many times can we just annoy fans with Goldberg matches like this? Because frankly, it's becoming it's stupid. I really, really liked Goldberg's match when he came back against Brock Lesnar in 2016, I want to say. 2016. But ever since then, it has just been garbage. It has been terrible. His match against The Fiend last year was just about two different moves. Jackhammer, Spear, Fiend trying to do one thing. Braun Strowman versus Goldberg. And it's like, it's not even that the opponents can do more moves against Goldberg. So Goldberg can do a jackhammer and spear. And somehow, like, his aura just means that his opponents can only do two moves as well. Because Drew McIntyre and Goldberg, um, we had, like, about two minutes. Now, this is going to tell you something. I actually started timing the match just to find out how long it would last. And I timed it from when they first started wrestling. And then on the commentary, they were like, well, this match hasn't actually started yet. And I was like, well, you could have given us the sense that this is a 10 minute match um, by just including this extra nonsense into it. But even then, it was only about four minutes in total. But it means that Goldberg, worthy challenger to Drew McIntyre, not got beat in two and a half minutes, two and a half minutes. Drew McIntyre defeated his opponent. Bill Goldberg, former world champion, universal champion, twice over, WCW champion, Hall of Famer, in 2 minutes 32 seconds. And McIntyre, he did, um, you know, he did his, he did a headbutt, he did his kick, and, and that was it. And, and what is the point? Like, and it was just like, he did the same thing over and over again. What is the point of having a like a finisher that you just just do the finisher it's not a finisher it's your only move then and Goldberg also is really starting to not look great now obviously this storyline came up very last minute and if Goldberg wasn't quite in ring condition then fair enough like I don't want it to be that I'm knocking Goldberg but this reaches a point where it's just a bit too much where He was in shorts, and now they'd got Goldberg branding on them, but he looked like he was in his swimming trunks. And his arms looked very small for Goldberg. And he was always lean when he came back against Brock, and 
even against the fiend and everything, but he looked he looked noticeably smaller. And you know when we've got Claymore, and oh, is he going to pin Goldberg in three seconds? No, oh, thank God. And then it's Spear, and oh, he's going to now pin him. They went to the outside, and he spears him through the barricade. And it's like, can you continue, Drew? It's like, well, of course Drew can continue. This doesn't trick anyone. Once again, Goldberg, he's a big guy. He could put um, Drew McIntyre into a full Nelson. They could do a test of strength. If he can do a jackhammer, then he can do a suplex. He can tease going for a jackhammer. He can do a headlock. He could do a waist lock, a bear hug. My goodness, he's like a powerhouse. Put him in a bear hug. All of these moves I could do. You don't need to have, like, all of the lifting moves and body slams and power slams. Like, he used to do, like, an arm bar or something. Just do a bit more of this. Give us, like, an eight-minute match. And then we'll be like, yeah, that was good. Goldberg still got it. But it just doesn't come across like he's got it. And now, was it Claymore? What else What else did McIntyre do? Anything? I can't remember. Anyway, I give that match one star out of... Like, I'd give it zero stars, but just for the sake of giving things a star, I give it one star out of five. Goldberg and Drew McIntyre is one star. I, I honestly, by that standard, hope that we don't... But I hope Goldberg just was like, look, I want a match in 2021, and let's let's call it a day there. He's passed the torch, because he, he, at the end, Goldberg was like, well done, you passed the test. What test? Like... This doesn't make any sense. You could hear Goldberg telling McIntyre he passed some sort of test. Um, what else did we get? Sasha Banks, Carmella. It was all right. Um, I'll be honest. Uh, I watched this and it was like one a.m. I can't really remember this match at all. I forgot it was on the card, but um, it was good actually, from what I remember of it. There was like Carmella actually held her own and did more than what I expected her to, but. Like even just what I'm remembering, it's probably more what I remember of Carmella in the in the um, Royal Rumble. So let's get straight onto that. In fact, so we had the 30 woman Royal Rumble match, and it was very good. I I didn't like everything that happened. Like it it was nice. It was nice when Jillian came down and we stopped all this nonsense about oh, will you team with me? That was just like kind of silly. Uh, it started with Bailey in the ring, and Bailey's Bailey's a star. She it was interesting. She came out sunk about having Michael Cole's name or Cole into the um, in like carved into carved shaved into the back of her hair. And I I don't know the storyline behind that. I'll be honest, but uh, it was it was good to see Bailey out there to, as a starting. A participant just because obviously she then brings a lot of legitimacy to everything and Naomi it's a shame um Naomi deserves better like people have campaigned for Naomi to win a rumble free for a good couple of years and coming out number two like obviously we're going to discuss the men's rumble in a minute and we'll be able to say about how coming out one or two obviously doesn't like mean that you're definitely going to lose but uh, Bailey Naomi. When Bailey got eliminated, we didn't even see it happen. It was kind of very silly. Um, Billy Kay coming out, and she's trying to team up with people. It was just annoying because every single like ninety seconds, it was the same routine. Team with me, someone hits her. Team with me, someone hits her. Team with me, we're just gonna walk past you. And eventually, Jillian Hall came out, which is a nice nostalgia thing. And this is one of the unfortunate things about the women's roster that because it is significantly smaller than the men's roster, trying to do a Royal Rumble, which I absolutely think they should still do it with 30 uh, participants in it, but it always means that they have to rely on bringing back some divas of the... Oh, sorry, I say divas. Some some of the women wrestlers are passed from the divas era, and they... Uh, also have to use a lot of the NXT, NXT UK participants within it. And it means that you end up with something like Gillian Hall coming out doing her singing gimmick, which was a parody of Brooke Hogan, which, you know, that's so long since being a relevant thing. It wasn't that famous at the time. So it was all right. Uh, Tony Storm came out. She did well. She... Uh, 
made a good showing for herself like on the main roster because obviously she's uh, NXT, formerly NXT UK. I'm trying to remember what else happened in this uh, off the top of my head. Uh, Ric Flair came out and I was like, what is going on here? Like, But obviously it was just to <laughs> introduce um, Lacey Evans because that whole storyline there. And for a moment I did actually have the fear that they were going to like be building up to Ric Flair versus Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania and it would be Ric Flair comes into the Royal Rumble. But thankfully they didn't do that. We didn't get a male participant taking part in the Rumble itself like we've had Santino or whatever else we've had in the past. There might be a second one. Um, we had some nonsense. And again, this is where it's a real shame that in the Women's Royal Rumble that they do feel the need to put in some nonsense literally every year. We had our truth come out and lose his 24-7 championship. And he's always followed by the same like group of ninjas and gobbledygookers and whatever other like clowns. It's like, why do they just follow this guy around? Who wants that championship? Is this is this how desperate they are to have prestige? Like, if they gave the 24-7 championship to someone slightly meaningful, so it's like, I've got this belt and I can hold on to this belt as a legitimate champion, but instead it's always just like, they may as well call called it the the Improv Comedy Championship or the Comedy Championship. But um, our tr- it fits our truths character well. He's good at comedy, but all of the other clowns following him just look very, very silly. Uh, what was interesting is Bianca Belair, who, spoiler alert, well, this isn't a spoiler I'm talking about the whole way, she went on to win the whole thing. She definitely got eliminated at one point. I forget who she was fighting at the time but there was a point oh uh Rhea Ripley her and Rhea Ripley both go over the top rope they both kicking and flailing their legs to try and not get eliminated and trying to stay in but absolutely both of her feet touched the ground and here's the thing if one of your feet touched the ground and you were then to hop and land on the other one then both of your feet is touched now I've seen uh some posts on Twitter where it's showing that perhaps one foot touched the ground and then, oh look, another one may have skimmed the ground. And then someone saying, no, but look, this is where they both touch at the same time. They don't both have to touch at the same time. It's just both feet have to touch the ground. Because otherwise with walking, for a lot of walking, or especially running, one foot will be on the ground, the other will not. And so if um, if both feet could touch the ground at separate times and it not count, then most people wouldn't get eliminated. So... We can forgive that. It's just unfortunate that with the shows, obviously they've got the Thunderdome, and so there has to be a sense of this being live to maintain at least the illusion that it's important to have a live crowd watching using their webcams for the Thunderdome aspect. But they shouldn't have they shouldn't have risked filming this because um, she definitely got eliminated. Bianca Bella got eliminated. Now this isn't like when The Rock got eliminated. And the cameras purposely didn't show it in this instance. And maybe they didn't want him to. And then they thought, like, oh, we can make this a storyline. Um, when The Rock got eliminated and it should have been The Big Show that was the winner. In that instance, The Big Show could 100% say, look, we were the last two in the ring. His feet touched before mine. Therefore, overturn this and say I'm the winner. Declare me the winner. This is 20 minutes before the end, 15 minutes, whenever it was before the end. So... The fact that Bianca Belair got back in, you could say, well, everyone who she eliminated should still be counted as being in it after that point because she was actually out. But then it would be a case of, well, everyone that they eliminated may have eliminated someone else, and it's it's very confusing. So this is just going to be a case of, well, this was a mistake, and they could put it into a storyline, but who would they say is because it's not like the person that she last eliminated then gets to say well it should be me and it's um Rhea Ripley because there was such a time difference between when this mistake happened and the ending of the bout Mm. but um anyway last three in there were we also along the way we had Tori Wilson I'm trying to think who else turned up that is a bit of a surprise uh Tamina came in and as always, it's like, oh, Tamina's a threat, and then she's very quickly 
uh, taken out. Nia Jax, once again, fulfilled that role bigger, uh, better as being like the the bigger, more powerful um, woman's wrestler. And so Tamina didn't get anything from this. She always comes in. It's like years ago where they would always be like, well, we need to bring out Earthquake or we need to bring out uh, Mark Henry in the Royal Rumble or Kane. And we'll get more to him later. And then just nothing happens. Alexa Bliss came out and she was like about to turn into evil Alexa. And it just, it looks very silly in all truthfulness. Um... Because we knew it wasn't going to happen. We know magic isn't real. They're going to have to wind up this storyline before we get back in front of a live audience. Because it's nonsense. But everything with The Fiend and with Alexa Bliss, like being able to do their voodoo magic or whatever the silliness is. Um, One second. Then... It was it was better that she was just in and out rather than actually do that nonsense with Alexa Bliss. So, um, what else did we have? Yeah, the last three in the Women's Royal Rumble match were Charlotte Flair, were Rhea Ripley, and was Bianca Belair. And Bianca was obviously going to win. There was a chance that any of them could have won in theory just if they wanted to mess with us, but... Uh, Belair, this was like her year, her t- opportunity. Last year, obviously, at WrestleMania, we had Flair and Ripley for the NXT Women's Championship as uh, a result of Flair winning the Women's Royal Rumble. If she had won it again, then what territory would we be going into for this one? You know, Just again, because obviously the year before, we had uh, Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. So I think it's time for Flair to not be in the women's main event at WrestleMania. But uh, we'll see what happens. There's still a lot of time between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania, so who knows who Belair will go against, but I don't expect we're going to have anything that takes Belair out of the picture. Let's see. We then had... What was it next? The Oh yes, Roman Reigns against Kevin Owens for the Universal Championship. Last man standing match. And... There was a big boo-boo in this. There was a lot of great stuff. There was some stuff where I'm sure a lot of AEW fans were like, hmm, I'm sure Tony Khan was like, yeah, you're welcome. Just because they did their running about all over the arena, which is one of the cool things that they can do with the Thunderdome. That is an actual benefit of the Thunderdome, because I always felt sorry for the fans like in the late 90s when it's like um, going into the back and WCW backstage assault. And it's like, well, they're going into the back, and now you're just watching the Titantron if you're at the arena. It seems like it's exciting, but actually it just means that you're, you've are you paid to turn up to an arena to watch a television show with, like, 30,000 people sat next to you. So, they did all of their stuff. They did some stunts where uh, they used a forklift truck. Kevin Owens, like, lifted up the... The, the platform of the forklift truck climbed up and then did a sent on on Roman. We had uh, Roman run over um, Kevin Owens in a golfing cart, which was very much Matt Hardy and Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn, uh, Sami Guevara. And I'm sure, like, it's, it's it, people said it was really risky when. Um, Sammy Guevara got ran over and the idea here of Kevin Owens going through the windshield shield and the plexiglass, this and that it was still very dangerous maybe there's some way in which someone could say well this was different, maybe it was a slightly smaller cart, maybe it wasn't as um, as fast or whatever but it seemed like a bit of a risk which I don't particularly think is super necessary for them to take but it was a good match but the big boo boo in it came when uh, Kevin Owens handcuffed Roman Reigns, and <laughs> then you see the referee, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and Roman Reigns just grabs the referee and smashes the referee's face, so it's like, oh, look at that, he couldn't get up because he was handcuffed so close to the ground, when obviously he could get both his feet to the ground, which is how they solved this problem, because Paul Heyman comes over with the keys, and he's completely 
unable to <laughs> undo the handcuffs, even though there's now another referee going one, two, three, four, five. They then cut across to Kevin Owens, and it takes them absolutely ages to get this, and so it's like, well, why did the referee <laughs> stop counting? <coughs> Again, another thing where they should have just like pre-filmed this, because it wouldn't matter to the Thunderdome. They could just assume what they're seeing is live. Oh dear. Right, what else? So, we had the main event, which was the Men's Royal Rumble match this year, and Edge came out number one, Randy Orton came out number two, and it's like, wow, we're revisiting a story from a year ago, and I love it when they do this in Royal Rumbles. So many years ago, they did Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker fighting throughout an entire Royal Rumble, and then I think one year later is when they had, so that would have been like before WrestleMania 24, then the next year was WrestleMania 20, 25, and they had their first Mania match, their classic WrestleMania match, probably the greatest match of all time, and then the next year they had the next one, and it was like once a year, these Undertaker and Shawn Michaels have this big match. In this same sense, Edge came back during the Royal Rumble last year, they were like rated uh, rated RKO, Edge and Orton, they're a thing, they're a team again. And then, obviously, the next night, uh, when they teased Sunk at the end of Edge eliminating Orton, after Orton was going to eliminate Edge or whatever, and the next night, Orton attacked Edge, and then it led to, well, Edge can't come back. Uh, Orton did all the build-up with Matt Hardy and Christian and everything else until Edge came back, took his revenge at WrestleMania. Then they had another match, I think, a month later. Edge may have become injured. And then we've come back and Edge has returned this year, 2021 Royal Rumble. So he's made a return at the Royal Rumble two years in a row, but this time entering the Royal Rumble first. And that is a heck of a risk considering, and again, spoilers if you haven't seen it, Edge won. He went in at number one and won. And to me, this it feels a little bit weird, like an observation. Goldberg came back to face Drew McIntyre and had the worst match of Drew McIntyre's career for him and it's like well wh where was the future in Goldberg why why give this opportunity to Goldberg it didn't make McIntyre look good it just gave him the worst match of his career we can say that he's beat Goldberg but is that really going to elevate McIntyre in any way when it was such poor performance by Goldberg is that like the situation we're at now I'm a big fan of Goldberg and I know I've been ragging on him in this in this podcast. But I'm a huge fan of Goldberg, but this was not a good performance. And it didn't help Drew McIntyre. Edge came back a year ago, and if he'd won the Royal Rumble a year ago when he came back, then people would have gone nuts, and it's like, yeah, Edge is back. But Edge then disappeared for the better part of a year. He had two other matches last year, I believe, both against Randy Orton. And so for him to come into the Rumble a year later again and then go on to Wrestlemania how how often is Edge gonna wrestle now maybe it'll be like when Shawn Michaels came back and he won the world title against from Triple H in the first elimination chamber and then he wrestled Rob Van Dam in a short match and then lost to Triple H again and it's like well if that's all he does this is this was you know worth it just to have a little bit more Shawn Michaels but this is the main event of WrestleMania. This is not going to elevate Edge to go on to something for the next year. This isn't going to give them a main event for the next year. Now, WWE, for many years now, has thought of, like, right, we'll bring The Undertaker back once a year. We'll bring Goldberg back in for WrestleMania. We'll bring Triple H back for WrestleMania. And this is now what they're doing with Edge. And in one sense, good luck to Edge. And clearly, lasting from one all the way to the end... Edge still does have it. Because the funny thing was, Orton got um, his knee busted or something when Edge um, attacked him on the outside, like did sunk on a table, and then like Orton squealing in pain, and they take him back, and we see Orton in the trainer's room, and they do acknowledge that Orton wasn't eliminated. And so then they had the big tease at the end where Orton comes back in after Edge has eliminated the... Final person, I'm trying to think who it was now, um, Seth Rollins. And after Seth Rollins is gone, 
then all of a sudden, oh no, RKO, but within literally 10 seconds, Orton's big surprise, look at this, I tricked you all and came back in an hour later, just got him eliminated and humiliated, so it's not really much cause for a Randy Orton edge match at WrestleMania this year. Unless that's, of course, what they decide to do, but they kind of made Orton look a bit of a punk here um, before this, before we have even got to that. I think it's more likely that Edge will go against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I might be wrong about that. It could be Edge and McIntyre, but I don't see that. I think last year they wanted Goldberg and Reigns at WrestleMania, and I don't think there's any chance that they'll do that again. They could have done Goldberg and Reigns at this pay-per-view, and... Who knows why they didn't, because it's not a WrestleMania-worthy match, but if they'd done Goldberg and Reigns here, it's like, okay, we've put right what once went wrong, because obviously Reigns didn't wrestle at Mania last year, and we got Goldberg and Strowman. But if they're never going to do Goldberg and Reigns, then I think what they're going to go for is Edge versus Reigns. Now, what does that have to do with Goldberg? It's the Battle of the Spears, because Goldberg is like the inventor and innovator of the spear, and then, obviously, I think Edge was the next one to start doing the spear as a big move as his finisher. And it was kind of hilarious that you'd get Goldberg do it, but then Edge would do it. And he's, even though he's big, he was a skinny guy. It doesn't look like Goldberg. doesn't look like you've got a freight train running through, through you. Um, so I think that's what they're going to go for. They're going to go for Edge versus Roman Reigns, because obviously Roman Reigns uses the spear, and it's just going to be the Battle of the Spears. And it was great. What else happened in the Royal Rumble? I'm trying to remember. We had Christian. At last, he is on his own, except for his back. So Christian came back, and it was a little bit worrying. I thought Christian was just going to come back and get beaten up before he actually... Um, made it through anywhere like I'm, I'm glad I was wrong because he, he did a significant amount he did an unprettier he got thrown over the top rope and like took a little bit of a bump he did some double team stuff with Edge and I'm glad they didn't go down the route like we had last year so Edge saw Christian it's like ah oh, my friend why wouldn't you tell your friend that you're going to be back like that it's supposed to be his brother but Edge and Christian back together was a really good feel-good moment. It was great to have Christian in the final four. I don't have a clue what they're going to use Christian for from this point onwards. I can't really envisage that Christian's going to be a, much of a main eventer. He's probably going to have some storyline, this or that. Maybe it'll be Christian and Randy Orton at WrestleMania. But who knows? Time will tell. And... Yeah, it, it was it was a decent rumble. Like obviously we had stuff. Sami Zayn still playing his like, oh, I'm really treated unfairly gimmick or whatever it is. And I'm trying to remember who else was significant. Kane came back at number eighteen, and that was good to see. And it was great because it was Kane's eighteenth Royal Rumble. They brought him in at number eighteen, so it's like, oh, see what you did there. And that was a lot of fun. But let's have a look. Oh my god, I was just about to look up something for the Royal Rumble just to get some of the names who was in it that I might be forgetting. And it says here that there's a website, I won't say what it is because it's just nonsense, uh, said that a f former president would be entering the Rumble. And that was one day ago. Well, that is like the ultimate clickbait. Oh, what a nonsense. So, anyway, let's see who else we had in the Royal Rumble this year to be able to comment anything more on it. I don't think I've got these results here, which is a bit of a pain. I should have had this list out. Who else was in the Rumble this year? Anyway, I might, I might wrap things up here for now, just because if, if I can't find the participants even, then it's all a little bit of an annoyance. Let me just give me one second. WWE.com. Let's just see some photos or something just to spur on the brain, because when your brain forgets every participant... Like I said, I was watching this at 4am. Uh, 4am 4 4 it finished, and... I was so tired I fell asleep like 10 minutes before the end and had to rewind it, uh, which is never so fun. Because I, I just wanted the statistics of who got rid of who to be able to um, to be able to say a bit more. Okay, so here we go. 
Edge won the Royal Rumble. This is from WWE.com. Is it going to give any of the statistics? So, obviously, Kane, what was just saying about Kane, Kane came back in. Kane started, he still looks like an absolute monster, but he's starting to look not quite in the same shape that we'd seen Kane in before. Um, but he eliminated a couple of people and then got eliminated himself. Obviously, one of the big favourites was Daniel Bryan, and it wasn't meant to be. They're never going to give Daniel Bryan the Royal Rumble win. It's so interesting that they'd give it to Edge and not Daniel Bryan. Just because Daniel Bryan's not gonna he has to come back from an injury as well, same as Edge has. Uh debatable which one was worse, concussion injuries versus neck injuries. But they've still got some mileage in Bryan and if they leave it too much longer, then it will be a case that there's not gonna be much mileage left in Bryan because this year they could have had Bryan win, go on to Mania and have that feel good moment all over again that they had a few years ago. And everyone would have been happy, and then you've still got Daniel Bryan for the next two or three years. But if they do it next year, then it's going to be, well, you've got Daniel Bryan for the next one or two years. And if they leave it the year after, it's going to be the same situation as Edge, where it's like, well, you've got Daniel Bryan until, you know, he takes months off and comes back once a year. But anyway, AJ Styles, we had some shen shenanigans. So obviously, I didn't mention this earlier with Bianca Belair. Um, I think it was Bianca Belair. Who else was it? There was a couple of like close escapes, but there was definitely one where it was like people flipping themselves and holding hands and jumping back into the ring. Uh, that was Naomi had another one of her close escapes where she landed on her back and was... Oh yeah, it was Naomi and, and who else? I can't remember. But she had to like flip into the ring. Naomi and Bianca Belair. Cause, okay, so Naomi landed on the outside. She's on her back. She grabbed Bianca Belair's um, long, very, long, very, very long ponytail and pulled on it, was able to get herself back up into the ring a little bit. And when they're both half falling out, she was able to, they were able to hold hands and pull each other back in. We, we had a really weird moment with uh, Big E and Xavier Woods where Xavier was on the outside about to be eliminated. Big E went over to him and almost didn't help him. And it was obviously that he was trying to help him, but he just didn't... He failed to help him, and he just looked a bit silly. Uh, and they could have just done that a bit better. Uh, Damien Priest obviously looked good. I think he eliminated Kane in the end. I might be wrong on that. Let's, oh, let's see. I've got all of this stuff here now. So, um, I wonder who got rid of the most, in fact. So, Edge won after being in it 58 minutes and 28 seconds. That's insane. And let's see who eliminated Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, and Braun Strowman. So only three. They only count that as three, and they eliminated Braun Strowman. I suppose he was, but I bet they don't count that Christian had a part in it, even though he did. Uh, Randy Orton didn't eliminate anyone. Sami Zayn didn't eliminate anyone. Mustafa Lee, that's it, eliminated Xavier Woods. And it was so weird, just because Big E could have helped him there. Um... Jeff Hardy came in, didn't do very much at all. Dolph Ziggler eliminated Hardy, and it's like Hardy and Dolph Ziggler. I mean, they're both obviously getting on older than what they were in the past. They're not going to be as featured. But they were in this surprisingly uh, little, or like they didn't do anything of great significance. Jeff, in particular, wasn't in the match very long. Ziggler was in it um, significantly longer, but didn't really do much of note in it, and... I think I've heard like Ziggler saying uh, interviews and everything now that well he's just there to get his payday and he'll come in and maybe occasionally he'll get tired and want to leave. Shinsuke after winning like three years ago didn't eliminate anyone was in it for 22 minutes and then eliminated by King Corbin who is still just as much of a joke pretty much as that character's always been. Carlito returned of course and it's going to be interesting Carlito looked a million dollars. He looked ripped. He looked in as good shape as he was before. He was incredibly young when he was in WWE like 15 years ago, maybe more than that. And so he's not past it yet, but is this his return to actually have a run? Or is it just this one off and it's like, oh no, they're bringing him back with the Apple. I hope if he stays in WWE at least a little while, they don't just have him doing the I spit in the face thing because we don't just need to see people 
uh, play their hits. We want to see, like, okay, so how are you developed if you've not been here for 15 years? What's new about you? Uh, Big E got rid of Sami Zayn, Mustafa Ali, Bobby Lashley, Hurricane Helms. Hurricane came back, and he doesn't look like a cruiserweight, and it's a cruiserweight uh, gimmick, so it's it's a bit, you know, it's, uh, it's like... If that's the only surprise they could get, that's the only surprise they could get. But I'm sure they could have got someone a bit more interesting. What's the shame with something like this is it would have been great to see someone from AEW jump ship. Now, I know with contracts and everything, that didn't happen. But, like, long gone are the days of, like, truly, like, oh, my God, this person's just turned up in the Royal Rumble. That's um, from, like, another company or something. Edge coming back last year was obviously a huge surprise. But no one expected him to be any. He hadn't been anywhere. He was just retired, and he's coming back. So that's not quite the same thing. Like AJ Styles was probably the last one, and they even referenced it in the Rumble last night. That oh, this when AJ debuted in the Royal Rumble, it's such a uh, a huge thing. Elias got rid of Carlito. Elias, we really need to do something different with him. His career feels like whatever chance he had is gone. Um, Bobby Lashley had this big standoff with Big E and it was like US champion and intercontinental champion and I could I would have been happy if either of them would have won um, Daniel Bryan I would have wanted to have won most but Bobby Lashley he deserves it he deserves to have at least gone further get him against Brock for goodness sake at some, at some point uh, Kane got rid of Ricochet and Dolph Ziggler wow poor Ricochet he needs to he needs to get out of WWE Let's see, Dominic Mysterio got rid of uh, King Corbin, and I'm not sure, he wasn't in it that long. Dominic Mysterio in two minutes. I worry with Dominic Mysterio that it's going to be ten years before they use him. Now, he's come in early, and he hasn't had very much training or career pre what we've seen of him in WWE. Um, And so he's like a fast learner, and he's doing super well, but they also use him quite badly they could make him feel like a bigger deal because even though Rey Mysterio had been in other places in Mexico and ECW before we saw him in WCW he really got to showcase a lot of stuff when we saw him straight away in WCW and when they brought him into WWE they showcased him straight away Dominic Mysterio they don't make him look that great here Okay, let's see what else we got. Bobby Lashley eliminated Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, Hurricane Helms. Yep, so that's like three or four. And Christian eliminated Bobby Lashley. Now, is that going anywhere? Could they have Christian against Bobby Lashley? Because it didn't seem like that was a thing. So why do that to Bobby Lashley? I wonder, it's going to be super interesting just to see how they do plan to use Christian going forwards. Just because I can't see that he's going to be around for long and we'll see we'll see you know what he's what he's got AJ Styles didn't eliminate anyone and he was in there for 10 minutes he could have been in the final four AJ should have been in there he's someone that should win a Royal Rumble Daniel Bryan should have won it Bobby Lashley um I mean Edge if you're going to have it but Big E was someone else that you really could have teased if there was a live crowd there we would have had lots of moments where like the audience would have booed the hell out of things when uh, Big E got eliminated. It was a shame. We did see Kofi backstage, and he'd got uh, Brody Lee uh, ring trunks on. He'd got like an actual image like onto the tights of Brody Lee, which was a nice tribute. Uh, let's see what else we got. Cesaro, Sheamus, they didn't do anything meaningful. Uh, Braun Strowman coming in last... <sighs> Like, why, like, you know, he didn't need to be... You know, I get that this is, like, nowadays we find out certain people coming in, like, in advance, but it was always exciting. Who drew number one? Who drew number 30? And stuff like this, but now they give a lot of that away. Which, obviously, Matt Riddle had the stupidest elimination, I think, in Royal Rumble history. Um, and I, also, I just want to say, like, because obviously, like, five minutes ago, I was like, ah, because I didn't have, like, the list, because I was on a site... And it just didn't have the results of who eliminated who. And that's why my brain was like, what? But Matt Riddle, he jumped over the top rope and then got himself eliminated. It was the dumbest, like, putting yourself in a risky position. And then it didn't pay off. It's like, well, 
You just made yourself look very, very foolish. But Edge won. Like I said, it could have been something more when Orton came back in after his injury and then just instantly got eliminated. It didn't make Orton look great. It's going to be super interesting to see where they take things, who Edge will go against at Mania. It's got to be Roman Reigns. But I almost feel like Roman Reigns is so hot at the moment that you shouldn't have Roman Reigns lose against um, Edge. But time will tell. It would be a, definitely a feel-good moment if you've got Edge winning the uh, Universal Championship at WrestleMania in front of like 30, 50,000 people, whatever they allowed at the Raymond J, uh, J uh, Stadium when they get there, the Ray J. But with that, guys, I'm going to wrap this up here because as you can tell, completely, and I completely acknowledge it too, my brain is fried. I was up late watching the Royal Rumble. Really enjoyed it. But just gathering my thoughts to be able to speak out loud has been a little bit more challenging <laughs> than what I would have expected. But like we're going to cover stuff that happens on Raw. We're going to get a lot more of these Superkick Mania pro wrestling podcasts from Extreme Improv, from Extremed. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you head over to youtube.com forward slash Extreme Improv and smash that subscribe button because you will be able to get these podcasts on on the video form where you, like, you'll still just be able to hear them but you'll be able to watch them on the YouTube channel you'll also be able to get this where it's on Spotify or Google or Apple Podcasts so smash the subscribe there my name's David Pustansky and until next time stay safe, have a good one and always stay extreme.